Hello. This is Chris from Open Mind Space. Tonight's uh, episode will be airing on the Voluntary Virtues Network on July 7th, 2014 at midnight. So July 7th, July 8th at midnight. So what we're going to talk about tonight is related to the healthcare system and why it is screwed up and corrupt and why people are misled about how really to, it is how really they could fix it and some possibilities about how maybe it could be improved so During the last uh, several years, five, seven years or so, there has been a big push to make modifications to the healthcare system because it's getting very expensive and lots of people aren't covered by it and aren't able to pay for the services that they want with cash. And it is a huge problem. It hasn't gotten any better. With all the efforts to try and fix it, it hasn't gotten any better. And I think part of that's due to the fact that people don't know what the problem really is. They don't understand economics. And there's a bit of old corruption going on there as well. So, what is the problem? There's many problems, but it's important to step back and look at it and try to get the bigger picture. You see people um, who are just totally unaware of what's going on, squabbling over stupid bullshit. They're, they're squabbling over, oh, this ought to be covered, or this ought not to be covered, or this and that, and so on, and it's all, they're trying to design some kind of a one-size-fits-all one policy for everyone. And they have no idea what the implications of that crap actually are. You know, if we contrast health insurance with auto insurance, now auto insurance obviously is regulated as well, but it's less tightly regulated. Uh, you can buy auto insurance from anywhere in the country, and that gives you a lot more options. There's a lot more competition. There's very, you know, various, you know, criteria that they can price your policy based on and options that they can give you, and it doesn't cover oil changes and Rotates and rotation and balance of your tires and all that other kind of crap. And of course, you can get warranties for that kind of stuff. But you know, you may notice that auto insurance is very cheap by comparison. Um, I actually was on an on an insurance provider, and I switched insurance providers and got for the exact same price, got more than twice as much coverage. So I think part of that's just because the metrics that they used to evaluate my coverage had fluctuated and were in my favor, but also different providers are going to have different criteria that they base their pricing on. You've got to look around and find find it. You've got to do a little bit of work here and there to make sure you're getting the best price. That is not the case in health insurance. That has become so difficult to get a good price on um, for a variety of reasons. And one is your employer somehow has gotten in the equation to where when you go and work a job, you have a health insurance that you get. You may get a couple of plans that you can choose from, but you generally get health insurance through the employer, which is ridiculous. And as I understand it, the uh, health insurance that uh, this whole scheme was set up 
when the government was meddling in wages, you know, doing using uh, wage and price controls to try to fix problems that it no doubt created itself by fucking around with everybody's uh, lives, you know. So they try to fix it by fixing prices, which fixing prices never solves any of the serious problems. It just exacerbates them and draws them out and makes them even bigger problems. So <clears throat> we've got this kind of anachronism from past mistakes that the government has made. And we're kind of stuck with it right now because there's a lot of money kind of looping through this system. There's a lot of power in it, and nobody wants to give that up. Um, so what people do is they, they're not even aware of this. I mean, they know there's corruption. They know it's kind of a fucked up system, and it's overpriced and, and so on. But they jostle over what's to be covered and what's not to be covered and, you know, who's to pay for it. Uh, you know, having government subsidize it, taxing people who have more money and uh, sending it on over to people who don't have as much money. It's a clever little uh, scam they've got going. And if you think about it, um, they, you know, it, it's a democracy. It's a sort of a democracy. Whatever, you know, people may call it a republic. It may have started out a republic, but, you know, now it's a democracy more or less. And when you have, you know, money that you, if when you have the ability to steal money from people, to achieve your desired ends, you're going to be able to get the support you need in order to win the uh, the votes that you want, and that's why this was done. And and I'm sure there's some people who have benefited from it. There's no, it's not one of those black and white things. I mean, obviously, if you had no money and you weren't covered under insurance and you're able to buy insurance for uh, twenty bucks a month or something, yeah, you're doing pretty damn good, I guess. You're at least covered if some horrible thing happens. However, it really, at the end of the day, other than those people who are directly uh, on the receiving end of the kind of uh, major money flows that are created by this, at the end of the day, it fucks everybody. And I think even the people who might be getting money out of this are, are kind of getting fucked in the long run, or if not, their children, you know. Because um, you you greatly increase the expense that it takes for people just to exist, just to live. And, you know, for instance, um, I think I'm not on any sort of special insurance plan. I mean, I've probably got lower deductibles than a lot of people, but as as I recall, I think I'm when you add what's been paid on my behalf, which is part of my wages really, um and the amount that's been taken out of my check, I'm probably paying over a thousand bucks a month for this shit. And you know, I have a daughter with some health issues and some of her supplies are covered, but uh I would much rather just have that money and buy those supplies. But it's become, when you start making things prescription and having all this bullshit to where you can't just make your own decision and buy something without a lot of trouble, uh, then it makes it very difficult for people to just use cash. And I think that's part of the problem, is if this was um, a cash market, if, if health you know, care for the most part was a cash market. You would see a lot of this corruption uh, squelch down to a minimum very quickly. Because when you're able to charge a fixed price on something and have these insurance companies, which they don't necessarily care, they're just passing on the premiums to you. So they fix the price for whatever item and you know, at some point in time, they calculate how much they paid out, and then they calculate the premiums by adding a, you know, adding up what they paid and coming up with an overhead figure, and then there you go, that's your new premium. And there, since they're one of the only, if not the only, carrier, 
that you have access to, then you have to pay it if you want to stay covered. So people are getting really uh, screwed by this. Whereas <clears throat> if insurance was more like auto insurance and in that, you know, auto insurance is not going to cover if you do stupid things, you know, if you need basic maintenance, uh, if, if it was, if insurance was more like, oh, you got in a car accident and they'll help patch you up and get you back on your feet, or um, you caught some major disease that you just can't afford to, to treat, you know, that kind of thing, it would be extremely inexpensive compared to what it is right now. I mean, I think it would probably cost less than half of what it does now, if not even further than that. And then, you know, if there were actually options where you could pick and choose what you want uh, to cater to your own needs, you know, like I don't need necessarily, you know, maternity care. I mean, there's, there's all these things that the government is mandating in these policies that uh, not everybody needs. You know, some people are, you know, they're older, they're younger, they're male, they're female. They, they don't necessarily need half the shit that's on the policy, nor would they necessarily even want to use those services, even if they may have some possible need for them. So when, when these people have preferences about what they themselves would want, like, the biggest hubbub, it's almost always the the area of contention is contraception and uh, birth control and and all this kind of stuff. And I get sick of it. You know, I'm glad there's people putting up the good fight and uh, talking about the philosophical, uh, you know, ramifications of covering these things and all that kind of stuff. But uh, really, they're beating a dead horse. You know, none of this shit should be covered by insurance. I mean, what is the point of insurance? Why is Why do people seem to think that running everything through some massive fucking bureaucracy and buying shit that has a fixed price through a pharmacy is somehow going to make things cheaper or more accessible or, or anything. I mean, when you think about it, the cheapest way to buy something is for somebody in a free market to produce it while competing with others in the market and then to sell it to you for cash. When you start introducing intermediaries, whether it be the intellectual property laws where they have patents that make it so only one producer or only a select, you know, only some specific method can be used to produce this drug and it's going to be a fixed price of whatever they want. Um, that's going to be way more expensive. And then if you throw on top of that insurance and filing claims and all that, there's a immediate overhead. Some, I've heard some estimates in many cases, something like 30%. You know, like when you go to a doctor's office, you know, many of the people working there are just pushing paperwork around. Whereas if it were, you know, you going in there, getting what you need and handing them some money or a credit card or something, be much lower expenses and there are actually people opening up cash only offices where they don't have any of that um, overhead because they realize it's competitive you know there's a lot of people who want cash services they can't afford to go to these other places that have everything else all built in you know to the price so so we're wasting a lot of money and I, I don't think that I think that there's quite a few people who don't want to be wasting money on this system I mean not only is the system itself shitty 
in that uh, while there may be some, you know, scientific advances in many regards that are helpful, but there's a lot of, um, there's just a lot of bullshit going on. There's a lot of corrupt bullshit going on that's causing people not to uh, be able to get the services they want. You know, using the uh, the club of the state to uh, define what everybody's allowed to to do and all that kind of nonsense um, is resulting in you know fewer options for people, and it's resulting in the options that do that people do put the money in to develop take you know costing way more to develop and taking far longer to actually reach the market due to all the regulations and all this other kind of stuff. So it's really unfortunate because people are dying because of this. And all you see are these really misguided people pursuing options that are dead ends, that have been dead ends every time they've been tried. You know, you can add more government funding to the uh, healthcare system. It's not going to make it any better. In fact, you know, studies have been done on outcomes, uh, you know, for people who are on, like, Medicare or whatnot versus private insurance, and they often end up dying more often. Which makes sense. I mean, the people who are working on them are going to be paid far less. There's there's many cases where doctors can't afford to even spend any time with you if you're on one of these government plans because they're reimbursed so little that by the time you throw in all the office overhead and filing claims and having all the support staff and all that kind of stuff, the doctor only has at most you know, five minutes to spend with you. So if they have a bunch of Medicare patients, they're not going to really be able to give them any attention. They might you know, listen to what you have to say and quickly sign a prescription. And that's what a lot of doctors do. They don't have time to spend with you. The system is not geared towards helping you to stay well and to, to get well. It's geared to just fulfill obligations and to keep from getting sued and to, uh, you know, follow regulations and to vaccinate a bunch of people and fulfill a bunch of goals that are that are goals for the collective, in many cases, or goals for business as a whole, and not goals for you. Like you're not a big part of this. You don't really matter that much. I mean, yeah, they'll save your life if you come to them uh, in, in many circumstances, but they're going to get a handsome payout to do that. But you're not really the reason for this. Like, as a as a parent, you know, I've taken my kids to, like, the pediatrician's office, and uh, I found them... You know, I, I've got a okay doctor, I guess you could say, for, for what it's worth, um, as those kind of doctors go. However, I don't really find them all that valuable. I mean, I've had kids for five years, for over five years, five and a half some odd years. I've got two children. I have hardly ever needed any of their expertise and and I have a one of my children has cerebral palsy now I've been I've gotten a lot of great help from like therapists and and so forth uh, that's been the most valuable thing for me but as far as like doctors go you know the drugs and surgery and shots kind of doctors that's not been valuable at all other than they're kind of like a um, they're kind of like a bureaucratic intermediary. Uh, that's kind of what their role is. They 
people won't allow you to do what you know you need to do. And so you have to get their signature on things. So you've got to be like sending them paperwork. So they're wasting their time signing your paperwork for things that you know you need that they're going to rubber stamp anyways, unless it's just ridiculous what you're asking for. And for some reason, the authority can't just lie in the at least the responsible party, like the parent, for example. The person who's taking care of the child for the vast majority of the time that that child is alive. They can't be trusted to make decisions about about things. Uh, and I think a lot of that is the way that the public school system has kind of their procedures have kind of infiltrated many things to do with children. Um, you know, they require, or they at least try to make it appear as if they require vaccinations. So most people go and get vaccinations now. Or they uh, just have all these paranoid policies because, oh, such and such happened at one point in time and somebody got sued or fired or whatever. So that means from now on, you know, we can't do this anymore. Or in order to do this, we've got to get a signature and a prescription from the doctor. You know, ever try to send a kid to any sort of government uh, preschool uh, program or public school or anything like that, if they're anything but the, a healthy child, you know, if they've got any sort of illnesses, you're going to have to deal with all sorts of bullshit. And it's doesn't help the, the child at all. I spent I sent uh, my daughter to a, uh, a special needs preschool. Uh, you know, was at the advice of um, of her therapists, who were great therapists. They were great people. They've helped her a lot. Um, and uh, we said, well, okay, I, I don't like the idea of this, but we'll try it out and see how it goes. And I think the the teacher at this school was was nice. I mean, she. I think she did what she could within the framework that she was in. However, the uh, the problem was the the whole bureaucracy and the whole system. Um, for instance, um, my daughter is fed by via G tube, you know, because she had some. She's got cerebral palsy. She's got neurological damage and can't really eat through her mouth right now. So that's uh, quite an unusual need, but um, we, you know, we ha we've we take it in stride. I mean, we blend up her food for her and um, take care of her as best we can. And we found we figured out all sorts of great ways to take care of her to to meet her needs because you know we're around her all the time and we um, make sure that she. Um, is doing well and if she's not we figured out we solved the problem we don't need help usually to do that I mean we get guidance from therapists and and whatnot but uh, you know f figuring out what she needs to eat and what she needs to solve her health challenges and all that kind of stuff is something that we're perfectly capable of doing and I think most parents are and the problem comes when um, you start involving these doctors on a regular basis because when you do that you end up they prescribe you with antibiotics they, they do things to get you out of their office they, they do things to say well look I've done something you know see I write you a prescription and you know there's they almost always feel like they need to write you a prescription and maybe that's not necessarily their uh, motivation, but um, I think there's uh, there's probably a lot of parents who try to insist on some kind of prescription for everything, and so the kids end up taking, for instance, antibiotics way more than they need to. And when you take antibiotics way more than you need to, you imbalance the bacteria in your body, and you create a, a weak immune system, and then you end up being more susceptible to being sick, and then you end up getting antibiotics more, and then you end up getting potentially life-threatening illnesses more often, 
and just increasing your risk of having health problems. So if you can avoid that, you stay magically way healthier. Um, but, you know, I'm kind of taking a detour uh, from the, the original point, though, but, you know, it's basically getting at that I've found, I don't know about any of you, but I've found that it's not very useful that the, like, for parents, like pediatricians and whatnot are not very useful. Um, I haven't been to a doctor since I was in school. You know, I haven't been to a doctor in, like, 15 some odd years. I mean, other than maybe an acupuncturist a few times. Um, I may go at some point just to get my levels of, you know, my, my blood checked and do a physical or something like that, but I would be wary of uh, getting onto any drugs or anything like that. Um, so, but nonetheless, you know, I'm paying out the ass for this stuff. And so are many other people, and many of them don't even use it. And I understand that, you know, many people, when they get older, they end up using it far more. Um, that may be the case with me eventually, I don't know. Um, but I would like to avoid that, if at all possible. And the trouble is that my money is going into this system, assuming that I'm going to be using it, and... I don't have access to that money. I can't spend it on preventative things. You know, I'd rather have that thousand some odd dollars and spend it on high quality foods or getting massages and taking yoga classes and um, going to the spa or, you know, just doing things that keep my stress level down, that keep me healthy, that keep me happy, you know. Um, it kind of ends up creating the opposite effect, though. You've got to work to pay all these damn premiums to pay all the damn co-pays and all that kind of stuff. And it's depressing and it's um, stressful and it's a large part of your income that's going into this, you know, so that you've got to tighten your belt and, and other areas just so you can pay to, to dump money into this black hole. So that's one of the hidden costs. You know, I think people don't even think about that. They, they think, well, I don't want to be uninsured they don't realize they're paying out the ass for quite often something they don't even use. Something that they really, in all honesty, would be better off not using in many cases. That they would be safer to stay away from. Yet, there it is. I mean, this money is going in there and then it gets into that system and then you got all these idiots who are like politically active and motivated who are like, now that all this trillions of dollars is in these pots of gold, you know, we should uh, have it uh, cover abortions and uh, condoms and the pills that make it so you can get a boner easier and all this other kind of nonsense. I mean, why do I, why does somebody's boner pill need to be covered on the uh, insurance? You know, there's a lot of ways to make it so you can get a boner. You know, I mean, if you can't get a boner, taking a pill is not a very good way to fix that problem. It might give you a boner, but I'll tell you, if if your problem is that you can't get a boner, you've got much deeper issues. And I guarantee you, the doctor that gives you little boner pills, that gives you the prescription for that, he is not going to help you solve those problems. There are fundamental issues wrong with your system if you can't get a boner and you're a man. And these pills may make may kind of paper it over and make your life a little better in some ways, but if that's all you do, you are in some trouble. And then, you know, the birth control stuff, I mean, geez, that stuff is... Most of that stuff is shit. I mean, birth control pills? What the fuck? That shit is just pure... Uh, I mean, there's a lot of different kinds, but the ones that I'm most familiar with are just basically estrogen. That shit will fuck you up. 
you know, you take these damn pills, there's all sorts of risks that they don't tell you about, that people don't think about, that you know, think they're harmless, that they're innocuous. You're fucking with your hormones. And the same can happen by eating things like soy. You start fucking with the fundamental hormones and chemicals of your body, there's no telling what the hell you're going to do to it. You know, there's a number of ways to prevent pregnancy. Of course, not fucking. That would be one. Uh, using a couple of less invasive methods of contraception, perhaps, if you must. Um, timing cycles. You could use a combination of things. You could put a rubber on and... Uh, Understand when the person's ovulating. Maybe you do an ovulation test. Um, you know, there's there's a number of ways you can do it. If you combine two or three of them, you'll have a pretty good chance of achieving your goal of not having a pregnancy when you're not ready for one. Yet, the easy way out is what people want and it's and it seems I can understand why they want to have their sex and not have to think about these kind of things you know not have to worry about what if the condom slips off and what if the uh, you know what if I get pregnant and need an abortion or something <laughs> you know I mean that's horrible I mean I, I wouldn't want to be anywhere near a situation where I would even fathom any sort of abortion. You know, ha now that I have two kids, I, you know, I can't imagine making the decision when those children were, were still um, fetuses the, that they would be aborted and having their whole life erased. But, you know, that's just my own personal preference. I mean, I'm not some kind of blowhard who's going to sit here and lecture you on that. Or anything like that, but um, it is uh, a serious matter for, for damn sure. It's not something that one should take lightly. Now, when you have it, though, covered under these insurance policies, it sure makes it a lot easier because you, I mean, I, I don't know how it usually is. I assume you would, if you had a unwanted pregnancy and you went to go get an abortion, I assume you'd go in there. They'd probably charge your insurance company, you know, 500 bucks or something like that, you'd pay 20, 30 bucks, and there you go. That's, uh, to me, that's just a little bit too easy, and especially when you consider the kind of uh, lack of moral compass that uh, many people have in regards to uh, pregnancy and children and so on. It's um, making that really easy and cheap. And not and making it so people don't have to feel the pain. Uh, I mean, obviously there's going to be pain emotionally if they give a shit at all, but um, making it so they don't have to feel any sort of financial pain for that is a little troubling. You know, I understand why these organizations uh, have an issue with that. I mean, I can see it kind of from both sides. I mean, people understand that. Uh, Many of these children who come into the world in, in situations where their parents aren't prepared for them are going to get abused and are going to get treated like shit and live in shitty neighborhoods and have shitty lives. Um, I don't buy into that as fully as uh, many of these uh, kind of leftist uh, people do, though. I think that much of that is a cop-out. Uh, but suffice it to say, you know, without getting too far too, too far on the tangent uh, of, of abortion and so on. Um, it would be, I think, far better to just have everything that isn't a emergency kind of situation as a cash kind of uh, coverage. You know, that way this bickering wouldn't matter. You know, you wouldn't have to worry about your insurance premium going to pay for something that you object to. You know, 
you wouldn't have to be fighting over whether you get the boner pills or the birth control pills or the uh, boob enlargements or whatever nonsense these things are covering these days, the plastic surgery or the what have we. You know, there could be a really small, simple, concise, you know, list that if you come down with some serious illness or have an accident, you know, that could be covered. And, you know, so the people who want to pay the least amount can have have these bare bones policies and, and do it that way. And um, so if we if we kind of zoom back even further, if we zoom back a little further, um, I want to talk a little bit for those who maybe aren't familiar. Um, it might be interesting to talk about how these kind of problems have been solved in various situations in the past. So why look at the past? Well. The reason we look at the past is because many of the problems that we have now are relatively new problems. They're problems that we've only had in the um, the last few decades. Uh, healthcare. If you look at the, there's an article called "How Government Solved the Healthcare Crisis." Uh, you can hear audio versions of it or read it. I'm sure. Um, it goes into recent incarnations of the Western healthcare system for for you know people who are on who are of moderate means, um, and talks about how these problems used to be solved, and what what used to happen is uh, you may have heard of all these fraternal societies like the Shriners and and others of that sort. Um, there was a variety of them, and I think many of these were started by immigrants to, uh, I'm talking about the United States here, but you know, you have uh, these people immigrated over from various places, and they kind of banded together in these societies and uh, helped to take care of one another's needs. Um, to kind of have a social insurance that wasn't ha didn't have anything to do with the state, didn't have anything to do with the government. That was their safety net. So they had a community, and they had a, you know, people always thought about, oh, it takes a village and that kind of stuff. Well, that's how they did it, and it had absolutely nothing to do with the government um, at first. And what uh, they did to handle things like uh, health care was um, they would contract with a doctor, and uh, doctors would compete for these contracts. And in exchange, whenever somebody fell ill, um, the doctor was contractually obligated to treat them. And it wasn't one of those things where the more often you're ill, the more money they make. Uh, it was probably more than likely that they were just paid a certain amount of money, and hey, if you stayed well, then the doctor made money and had to work less. So. There's some great incentive there to stay well. Um, so that was, I believe, called lodge practice. Um, this was estimated to have cost, uh, based upon what I've read about it, it cost the equivalent of about a day's wage per year, per person. So... I mean, these, and these are just average people working average jobs. You know, they're not wealthy or anything like that. So it was something like $2 a year, which, you know, obviously $2 went a long way back in the early 20th century and so on. But, um, you know, these people were able to do pretty damn well. I mean, I know medical technology was different. Medicine was different back then. But... Most of what you need, most of what most people need at least, is to go to be able to go see somebody if they have a challenge that they can't solve. Some of us do it more than others. And that's where a lot of the activity is. Now, I realize we can't go um, back in time into those circumstances, but 
there's probably some variation of that that could be done in the modern day world that would suit the needs of the modern person. And I guarantee you that whatever that is is going to have nothing to do with the government. Um, it would have to be something similar, some kind of free market, you know, where you could pay for coverage and have a like a doctor contracted to uh, to help you if you needed help. So that's how it worked back then. It apparently it worked very well. Um, really, the um, the government is uh, the one who ruined it, um, as it generally does. Um, they pretty much screwed up the whole system. There were the AMA wanted to have a cartel, and they kind of uh, took over, and and it gradually became more difficult for doctors to be able to uh, to offer this uh, lodge practice uh, service, and. You know, medicine became more of a licensed profession. This was one of these quote-unquote progressive reforms is to make medicine into a licensed profession where you've got this cartel that controls who can be considered a doctor and who can claim to be able to cure anything and, and that kind of stuff. And uh, sure enough, it was the drugs and surgery uh, allopathic cartel that um, ended up getting the reins of power and uh, that's cost a lot of alternatives from being able to uh, to flourish and exist alongside it um, so you know we're going over past systems uh, another past system I've probably gone over this in a previous podcast but I wanna uh, just for completeness I want to mention it here um, Chinese medicine you know, that's the one I know the most about. Um, I think it's probably, there's probably some interesting things about uh, Indian medicine as well, like uh, Vedic uh, medicine. And um, I'm sorry, I'm kind of yawning. So it's been a long day. Um, but uh, in Chinese medicine, there was kind of an ins a similar incentive-based system in that you basically contracted with a doctor and they would be responsible for keeping you and your family healthy. And it was a blemish on their reputation if you weren't. So, you know, the incentives are very powerful forces in terms of keeping cost under control and making sure people are actually staying healthy. You know, when your incentives are all based upon sick people coming in and getting help and you being paid each time that happens, you know, there may not be necessarily some kind of conspiracy going on, but I tell you, you know, by and large, there's not going to be a lot of innovation happening in such an environment because you don't want to kill the, the golden goose. There's probably a lot of variation on outcomes, you know, between the different doctors. I mean, some of them probably have plenty of money and don't care, you know, about how often you come in. But, uh, you know, in general, if the incentives are that money is made when people are sick, you're going to get sick people. So... Something has to change about the incentives. Got to we got to stop, uh, you know, tinkering around with the little um, what's covered and all these stupid insurance policies. That shit's got to be, you know, if we really want to fix this problem, that stuff's got to go away. You've got to get rid of all the kind of centralization of authority that's happened in the medical system and make it more of a relationship between a provider and a customer more of a direct relationship if you know the more direct your relationships are with the people that provide you services 
the more those services are going to be tailored to your needs and going to be priced according to your needs. And you'll save money and you'll have just the services you want. You won't have all the services you don't need. And I think you'll be better for it because then you'll have your resources freed up. And there will be a lot less people pushing around papers in this healthcare industry and more people actually taking care of people. And when you think about it, if 30% of the people at least, and I, I think that's probably a very conservative estimate, if 30% of the people are just mindlessly pushing around papers, and who knows how much is waste on unnecessary tests and legal ass covering and yeah, lawyers and all that kind of stuff, and some of that may not be completely avoidable, but if you're wasting, you know, 30% to 50%, if not more, on all of this, what if a chunk, what if a good chunk of those resources was put back into actually taking care of people? Imagine, you know, you might actually get less lawsuits, you might actually get people who are healthier, and maybe the times they do come in, they'd be willing to pay a little bit more for, for better service. You know? Like, I, I go to a dentist that is not Blue Cross preferred. You know, they, they have these preferred statuses where they're willing to take a, a, a hit on the, uh, the cost if, um, you know, if they'll agree to pay the fixed price. But this dentist refuses to pay the fixed price. I mean, yeah, they'll file the claim and all that kind of stuff, but if it's if they pay less than what the uh, claim was, you got to pay out of pocket. And usually it's a good chunk. You know, and I I can't imagine um how um you know, when when you consider the fact that like with with dental somebody's got to sit there and it's probably the most labor intensive thing in the health field that I regularly uh, am a part of and that most people are. You know, somebody's got to sit there and look at your teeth and clean them all off and do all that stuff. All that tedious high um you know, it's it's not rocket science obviously, but it's um it's very laborious. And I think it costs me like $100 usually to do that. And I wonder like these other providers who are doing it with the preferred blue cross preferred how the hell are they able to pay for everything? You know, it's, it makes you wonder it's like they they've got the artificially low fixed price and they're able they're willing to accept that. But I don't even want to chance it. You know, they're probably just pushing people through like crazy. So I'm willing to pay a higher price for it, for better service, you know. And I don't have a lot of cavities. I don't have a lot of problems, you know, with my teeth. And even if I did, I would probably still want to pay the higher price. I'd want somebody to really take their time with it. I don't want them to be rushing and missing things and, you know, causing me uh, more problems with something that I can't easily get fixed, you know, if if... Like you only get one mouth. I mean, maybe one day there'll be uh, replacement teeth that you can get that are made from stem cells or something like that. But uh, as it is now, you lose it and the replacement options are not that great. So anyways, uh, kind of got off on a lot of tangents on this uh, discussion, uh, today's discussion. But... Uh, I really wanted to to delve a little further, you know, into the kind of screwed up attitudes that people have about how to fix the system, about what's wrong with it and how to fix it, and why this is so disastrous, and why it doesn't do us any good. You know, I, I get tired of, of seeing us tread water. We're just treading water, we're just trying the same shit it's like it's almost like we're just running into a fucking uh, brick wall over and over again you know I mean we've got the problems of the fact that this system doesn't work very well to begin with you know even if it were 
economically managed better. Um, and then it's mismanaged economically. It's centralized. It's, you know, managed by the state, which is the worst manager of any sort of system you can imagine. You know, and, and then you get these terrible outcomes uh, where, you know, how would you like to, you know, like when you get older, when you're in your uh, dying days, you know, it's going to be very important to you how this system works. You know, <clears throat> if you're <clears throat> young, you may not care. You may not care because you'll think, oh, I'm not ever going to need it. Or it's going to be a long, long time before I ever need it. But when you get older, as it is right now, you get put on that stupid, um, what is it, Medicaid, Medicare, whatever that crap is that uh, they kind of automatically put you on because they force you to pay for it your whole life. Um, which, of course, is completely government controlled and pays less money than private insurance does. And so you're old, and you're potentially going into the hospital for life-threatening situations on a much more regular basis than when you were younger. And you are going to be less. You're going to be more likely to die, even even aside from the fact that you're old already and are having you know a greater risk of dying. But these doctors aren't going to be incentivized. They're not going to be you know have the when they're having to make decisions about what they spend their time on, you know, one, you're already old. Two, you're, uh, they're not going to make very much money off of you, um, or or they may lose money. And three, you know, they're having to deal with this bullshit system and all of its requirements and regulations, and and often that's more on their mind than anything else. So. You know, this this is something that, you know, even in, from a completely, even if you don't give a fuck about anybody, you know, if you think about it, you are one day maybe going to need it. I hope not. I hope I don't need it. I hope I can f rely on myself and on other methods. But you may one day need it. Or you may one day like to have some choices, you know, some choices on how you handle your health challenges. As it stands right now, I don't see this getting fixed anytime soon. And a lot of the reason is because many people aren't aware of what the problem is. There's a growing number of people who are economically literate who kind of understand these things, but it's going to take a larger amount before you start to see a sea change of sorts, and maybe it will happen just after an economic collapse or something, I don't know. I think it will happen eventually just because you can't be irrational forever. You can kind of get to some extremes, but eventually it kind of snaps back. But as it is right now, if I were having health problems and I had the means to do so, I would probably just move to another country. I would move to another country with a far less regulated system. I mean, there's already people who either you move to another country or you take trips to another country for treatment. Um, I've I've heard of people actually going to uh, what was it? I think Peru to get surgeries. Uh, there's a number of places you can go. These places compete for tourists for medical tourists, but um, as it is right now, you know you got to take shit into your own hands. You know, wh whatever the situation is, as corrupt or or as efficient as it might be, you still have to figure it out. You know, I mean, you're responsible for your life. And it's unfortunate that there are these problems, and I just wanted to go over them. I try not to dwell on this stuff too much. I try to more just solve problems, you know, say, okay, obviously I can't control what these idiots are choosing to do. And that affects me, um, but I can control how I make my decisions. You know, like if, like when um, the doctors try to get 
us to feed my daughter these canned uh, foods, basically just feeding her like she was a dog or something, this canned crap, you know, that uh, it's got preservatives in it that's not got any sort of fresh content at all that's just probably been sitting in a damn can for months if not maybe even over a year um, we we didn't even have to think about that one there's no way in fucking hell I mean if I wouldn't sit here and eat canned food all day every day I'm not gonna I'm sure as hell not gonna feed her a bunch of damn canned food and I'm not going to wait for the government to change. I'm not going to wait for society to change. You know, I've got to be here, here and now. It's my fucking responsibility to make sure she's okay. And I'm not going to sit here and feed her a bunch of shit just because this bullshit, ignorant system seems to think that that's what I should do. I bought a fucking hand blender, and I cooked vegetables and things of that sort, and I blended it up. And I fed it to her that way. And I actually recently got a Vitamix. And that works wonders. It's way better, you know, in terms of the consistency of it. Makes it way easier to feed through tube and syringe and whatnot. But suffice to say, you know, the point being, you know, it sucks that these problems exist, but you've got to fucking take control, like, right now. Um, keeping yourself healthy. Um, it's just, it's even more important. I mean, because you're out of control of a lot, you you don't have control of a lot of the, the the things that you may need to rely on, despite your reluctance to. And that being the case, you want to minimize the chance that you're going to need to rely on those the, on those systems and on those people and, and organizations that have a strong chance of getting you into hot water financially or health-wise or otherwise, you know, you want to stay away from it, you know, at least I do, I don't know what you need to do, but that's the way I see it, um, I want to stay the hell away from that, stay, stay away from drugs and, and that kind of stuff, and, uh, just try to keep yourself nice and healthy, keep your kids healthy, don't want to have sickly kids, you know, you want to have, uh, you know, I'd like to have my kids be as healthy as possible, and sure enough, they are. And I, th I attribute a lot of that to uh, keeping them away from the antibiotics and the drugs and that kind of stuff. And they've never needed it. I've never been in a situation where I think, well, shit, I don't know. I think they need some drugs. I think they need some shots. I think they need some antibiotics. I mean, I believe I've used antibiotics a couple of times for my daughter. Um, she's gonna. She's a special case, though. I mean, she's got a a lot of challenges and for my son though he's a relatively normal kid uh, I don't think that he's ever had antibiotics I don't think he's ever been sick enough to actually need to go see the doctor maybe once I don't know but he's very healthy I mean maybe he gets the shits every now and then or has uh, you know throws up occasionally but uh, no life-threatening illnesses or anything like that. I think most kids are healthy if you don't uh, feed them improperly or screw with their system too much and, and weaken it. Um, but if you start tinkering around in there, you get to you get to the situation where you're you're going to be having to tinker all the time because you're screwing with some delicate stuff that self-regulates. So I hope I've. I mean, I, this this has been a little more scattered than I usually like to do it, but um, I hope I've gotten those points across as far as what's wrong with the system, how it could possibly be fixed, how it's been maybe better in the past, and how it could be better in the future, and a little a little bit over what we could do now to to be able to still function and still be as free as possible and as healthy as possible within that system. You know, any of these topics one could probably spend hours on. But I just wanted to go over a little bit there and uh, kind of touch on it. 
So I think I will probably go into other topics uh, for the next few episodes. Uh, I don't want to be like a completely focused on this health stuff. Uh, this is the uh, second one in a row, I guess. I think I've probably talked about it a little bit the episode before that, even if I recall. So I think uh, I don't want to just get in a rut on uh, talking about this this kind of topic. So I'll come up with something new and interesting for the next podcast, and uh, I hope you guys will find it uh, fascinating. I've got a ton of stuff that I'm getting into that I'm pretty excited about. Uh, so I'll have to wade through it and see what would make sense to discuss on this uh, in this format you know, on this network. So anyways, I hope that you have a great week and that you're taking care of yourself and you're healthy and happy. And uh, I'll do the same and see you in a week.